Based on the most recent Fed guidance, what they're going to do with interest rates, what's it mean for savers, borrowers, and investors? I've got that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. Been a couple weeks now, but recording this uh, early April and back in March when the Fed came out with, uh, with after their meeting, they kept rates steady. And no surprise, they kept rates steady. But to Wall Street's joy and most investors' joy, they're still signaling rate cuts before the end of the year. Take a look at this dot plot is what the what the, the Fed calls it. And this is where they show based on dots on a graph uh, where they expect interest rates to be, their, their Fed funds rate, the rate that they get to influence uh, by the end of the year. And you can see still a couple people say, well, we're thinking rates will still be where they are right now at the end of the year, i.e. no interest rate cuts. But the majority are expecting that interest rates will be sort of three notches lower. So three interest rate cuts by the end of the year. That's the majority. That's the that's the what, what the kind of prevailing majority opinion is uh, of the Fed. And listen, this is this is good news to to many individuals. And whether you're a saver, a borrower, or an investor. This, this could be good news. We're going we're gonna to break it down here. But the interesting thing is, it's not that the Fed meets every single, every single month. So you might be thinking, well, three more cuts the rest of the year. We're still, you know, we're, we're just barely into the second quarter. So yeah, that's, it'll be a slow pace. No, there's only six meetings left. There's only six meetings left and interest rate cuts, unless it's a dire emergency, typically are done in, in quarter of a percent increment. So 25 basis points is what the cool kids say. And so therefore, out of six remaining meetings, they're signaling that they're going to lower rates three times. So likely this next meeting will still be a pause and then the June meeting will be a cut. And then, so it's gonna be very interesting. It's hard to imagine, hard to imagine more cuts than that if we're not in a recession, if the economy is still plugging along and doing okay. In fact, it, 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 with six meetings left, it's, it's hard to fathom really, you know, three interest rate reductions, but that's what they're signaling. That's what, you know, that's what Wall Street expects. All right, so what's it mean if you're a saver? Essentially what the Fed is saying is, hey, I don't think we're raising interest rates any higher. So they're not going to be going up. In fact, we'll probably be reducing rates over this next year and certainly the next couple of years. So if you are a saver, here's what it means. Make sure you're getting paid on your cash. Make sure you're getting paid on your cash. These interest rates that are available today with a little bit of effort potentially are not going to be around forever. And I don't mean this is like, you know, a sale and you gotta, it's like a commercial where get this deal while it's hot because, you know, come Monday, it's not gonna be there. No, but right now, your money market, your savings account at the local bank is still probably paying 1%. And, and that's what you need to be on the lookout for. Do you have too much money, uh, too much of your reserves sitting in your checking account earning essentially nothing? Or do you have your emergency fund or too much of your reserves sitting in a, a, a savings account earning 1% when it could be in a high yield savings or a money market account or, or depending on your situation, a CD earning four and a half, five, five and a half percent. If, if you don't have your reserves earning four and a half, five, five and a half percent, then, then work with your CFP and, and capture these high interest rates while they're still around. If you do have some cash where you've been just on the fence, I was meeting with someone recently who's been on the fence, they have always had a lot in their, in their checking account. And I mean, you know, $200,000 or so in their checking account, that's their security blanket. And back when rates were nothing, when I told them, guys, you should be getting one and a half percent on this and you're getting nothing, they didn't really care. Okay, but now that they could be getting 5%, they've started to listen and they've moved about 100 of the 200 into CDs. And I told them, guys, these rates aren't gonna be around forever. In fact, 
we might, you know, by the time the Fed reduces or, or lowers rates, which could be a month and a half from now or a month from now, this 5% CD, uh, that, that, that possibility might be gone. You, so grab another 50 grand. If you're comfortable, grab another 50 grand, put it into a CD, get at least 5% and try to lock it up as long as possible, which is usually just a year, year and a half, something like that. So, so look at your cash. Make sure that you're getting paid appropriately, that, that your cash is earning enough interest. Look for high yield savings accounts, money market accounts. When it makes sense, look at CDs. Lock in that interest rate. Again, uh, make sure that you, you've got enough liquid resources. But if you're able to, or if it makes sense to lock in an interest rate, lock it in at a good rate for as long as possible, which unfortunately, unfortunately only going to be about uh, you know a year, 18 months. When rates do start dropping, I would expect the interest that you're gonna make on your savings account to drop very, very quickly, okay? And it's, again, it's not gonna go from 5% to zero, but it's gonna go from 5% to four and a half, very quickly, as soon as the Fed announces, um, you're gonna start seeing those rates adjust and, and respond accordingly. All right, so what about borrowers? What if you are borrowing money? What if you're, uh, you've got a mortgage or a car loan, or if you've got credit cards, are we to expect the same thing? Is this, is this ultimately good news to you as well? That, hey, the Fed's going to start lowering interest rates. I'm going to get some relief. No, no. On, for, for savers, when the Fed lowers interest rates, it, you're going to see a lower interest rate immediately. When you're borrowing, your, your rate is not, going to be, it is not going to move as quickly. When F the Fed's raising rates, oh, absolutely, they're going to raise rates very, very quickly You're on, on, on borrowing for, for loans. However, on the way down, it's not going to react that quickly. It, it unfortunately won't. So if you are hanging on by a thread, if you're holding your breath, just, okay, I think I can you know, play the shell game and make this whole thing work um, just a little bit longer. And if the Fed will start lowering interest rates, then my credit card will, you know, my, my credit card interest will go down and I'll, I'll actually be able to, to have everything in equilibrium. Or I can't really make my mortgage payment. I'm just waiting for the Fed to lower rates and then I'll be able to refinance and this will all work. Guys, I wouldn't plan on that. I, I would do the hard work of looking at your budget, making some adjustments, freeing up the cash flow, doing, making the hard choices uh, as if that even, even if the Fed lowers rates three times this year, as if it's going to do nothing to, the, to your borrowing costs, that you won't see your borrowing costs shift much at all for maybe a year or more, um, depending on, on how quickly the Fed, the Fed lowers rates. Now, if we see a recession, if the consumer is struggling and, and therefore profits from businesses struggle as well, the Fed might be more aggressive with interest rates and then loan rates will come down faster. I just, that's not what they're forecasting and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want you to set your hopes on that. So if that's you, work on that budget, work on making some tough choices to navigate these high interest rate environments. I don't see borrowing costs drop significantly in the near term. And then finally for investors, for investors, this is signaling that the Fed is doing the unthinkable. And I didn't believe it was possible either that they were, you know, at hard landing, which is, okay, they've got to fight inflation and they're going to sort of demolish the economy in the process. Or soft landing, okay, they've got to fight inflation and we're going to have some struggles in the economy, but it will be a shallow recession. Or a no landing, which is, we're going to get control of inflation and actually the economy will, you know, have its hot and cold spots, but it's going to kind of navigate this unscathed. Guys, we it looks as though the Fed is navigating this no landing scenario, which is improbable. They've never been able to do it. So I'm still holding my breath. But if the Fed starts lowering rates, that's good for Wall Street. That is good for Wall Street. That means businesses borrowing costs will be lower. That will mean, you know, there's going to be less pressure on consumers and, and, and therefore company profits should be more reliable or consistent. This is ultimately good for Wall Street. What about bonds? What about the bond market? Well, lower interest rates mean higher bond prices and bond investors have still not recovered. The bond market has not recovered after the previous three years of very, very fast uh, interest rate hike. So if the Fed lowers rates, three times, does that mean the bond market will recover and go back to where it was? No, but you will at least hopefully see some movement in the right direction. So for, for investors, 
absolutely good news. You need to be watchful for signs that inflation is actually spiking back up or going back up like it did in the late 70s, early 80s, where we had a triple top market or inflation went up, Fed responded, inflation came down, then it went up again, it absolutely surged, came back down, surged again. And that's what we need to be on the lookout for. The Fed is actually pulling money, they're shrinking their balance sheet, they are pulling money out of the economy and hopes that uh, that the seeds of inflation are being kind of snuffed out. And, and um, But we'll see, ultimately, this the Fed lowering interest rates three times without, not in response to a recession or economic slowdown would be fantastic news to Wall Street and the bond market. Wall Street's, I think, already trading on that, on that, on that hope and, and belief. And so uh, has gotten themselves a little, uh, you know, in front of their skis here with valuations. We'll see if the Fed does lower rates in, you know, three times this year, that could ultimately still keep this rally going and give legs to this thing. So. All eyes remain on the Fed, it, it really does, and inflation data. So, um, so whether you're a saver, a borrower, or an, an investor, work with your certified financial planner, see what the proper approach is for your situation to either lock in these interest rates while they're still around, navigate this challenging high borrowing cost environment, or have a prudent long-term investment strategy that takes advantage of this, this fertile soil that the Fed has created with these uh, potential to, to lower rates and avoid an economic recession and for your financial plan out there in the future. So work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one of my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with KYsmoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well. Or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.